Okay, I think, does it say recording for you? Yeah, it said, yeah. Perfect. Then I'll let everyone in. Okay. Oh, there's more people joining. Okay, hello everyone. Oh, more people. Okay, I think everyone's joining. I'm sorry, it took a little longer than it was supposed to. We had some technical difficulties. I had some technical difficulties. So oh, thank you. She was being <laughs> very nice and trying to fall on the sword. My computer was not working properly, but here I am. I'm ready to party. Thanks for joining, everybody. Perfect. Okay, before we start, um, you guys are obviously welcome to turn on your cameras um, for as long as um, while speaking, we'll ask you to um, just unmute yourself, uh, mute yourselves. Um, if you have any questions, you can post them in the chat at any time and um, uh, we'll, we'll add or will will answer them. And there will be a little interactive um, thing halfway through this question, uh, questions answer session. And if you would like to, um, there is a possibility to change your name, um, to rename yourself if you want to add your pronouns like I did, I already did. You can just add them behind your name. Um, there's an easy way to do that. If you go on participants at the bottom of your Zoom window, should be, you can Oh, wait, there's more people coming. I'll let everyone in. Then you can just go where your name is and go on, click on more, and there will be the first option to rename yourself. And then you can just add your pronouns at your convenience. Okay, that's for that. And yeah, I'm handing over to you, Will. <laughs> And thanks yeah. so much for being here and for doing this. Like, I loved your talk at our event, and it's great that we have the opportunity to do this little follow-up session. So thank you for that. For sure. You're welcome, and thank you for having me. Yeah, this, is, uh, this has been so great, and I loved the session. It was, you guys did an awesome job of putting it together and getting it all organized, and um, I really enjoyed it. And so I was actually thrilled and happy to be doing this. So, um, yeah, I'm happy to, I don't know how this, am I taking questions? Am I just starting to kind of talk about some stuff? How, how would you like me to proceed? You can start talking and people can start writing questions and then you can see them in the chat if, uh, if everyone posts them for everyone to read them. And mm -hmm. then you can, oh, there's more people coming. Um, and then you can just, uh, yeah, answer them as you like. Perfect. Well, so then I guess I'll just kind of start kind of just summarizing what, what I did talk about for those that were potentially had, had joined or maybe for those who um, didn't catch all of it or didn't, didn't catch it. So basically what I'm trying to do is, is something that I'm not seeing other people in my space do. And it's basically, I'm trying to kind of come in the side door and use traditional entrepreneurial success that I was able to have um, by growing and selling a business for, uh, for a combined nine figure sum that was, you know, everything I thought that I wanted when I was younger and growing up and I had a real, a real struggle during childhood and I hit what I call my rock bottom bounce when I was in college. And that's when I kind of rediscovered what life is really about. And I was fortunately turned on to the self-help world. And I became like this insatiable beast trying to become bigger, better, faster, stronger. And I knew that there was hope and that I could, you know, be something other than this typical victim that I'd grown up um, to become. And that I, you know, that there was, there was another side to things. So I, figured that one of the best ways I could rebuild myself and start fresh and reinvent myself was going to be, I was going to become filthy snake and rich and I was going to make everybody pay for all of those things that they ever did and said to me, right? Your typical victim attitude, which is what I used to have. And so that became an obsession, a journey. So in part of my 
my self-help and rediscovering myself, I actually got into a lot of business books and, you know, starting early on, uh, Robert Kiyosaki, uh, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I think was his first one. I read all of his books, but that kind of got me on the journey of, okay, so this is, this is how you do it. And, and I just became again, like this human science experiment where I was using myself testing all these things I was learning and seeing what worked, what didn't, and kind of reforming my hypothesis and literally just taking step by step each day and, and look, using what I later came to found was the, uh, came to learn was the law of compounding, which is essentially that, you know, things don't happen o- overnight. Um, we like, especially in this instant generation that we're living in, we like to think that, you know, or we, we, we were tricked, I should say, in the media and, and, and whatnot into thinking, oh yeah, it could happen easily. There's that kid that's making 10 million on his uh, social media or this, you know, the, the Kardashians, you know, and yes, and if there's a one in a billion that that stuff kind of comes to them and happens, but for them, for 99.9% of people, if you want to grow something and if you want to become something, whether it's a business, whether it's uh, a better person, it doesn't, it, it happens step by step. And it's using what I call is the equation of life, which is something that I came up with, which is essentially your belief system plus your repeated actions plus time equals who you will become. And one of the problems that people have is that their belief system is a little bit jacked up because of the, the system that they grew up in. And they, it starts with the parents who are just passing along whatever it is that they've learned uh, and been taught from their parents and their parents' parents, right? And so there's this broken system of certain ideals and things being passed. And I'm not saying parents are teaching you all bad things, but again, they're kind of victims of the system themselves. And a lot of the things that they're, promoting don't actually lead to ultimate long-term happiness and then you get into the school system and it's a similar story we're using an outdated system from hundreds of years ago um you know the curriculum hasn't changed it's still a one classroom model meanwhile we know scientifically we've learned everybody learns differently uniquely and that if you want to really excel in life you need to figure out early on what are your strengths what are your passions what are your weaknesses how to work around them versus this one size fits all model that we have right now. Where it's like, okay, standardized, te- standardized testing. This is where you fall. You're either smart or you're a failure. And so I had fallen victim to all that early on and I was able to learn to overcome it. And so flash forward back to what we were talking about earlier, 25 years later, I built this business. I sold it for this huge sum. And luckily along the way, I'd been reading about what it really means to be happy. And so I was, actually incorporating these things into my life along the way. And ironically, that's why I think I was able to sell my business for such a high amount. If I just focused on the career part of it and not pay attention to what I call these other four core areas, it's five core total, career and finance being one of them, but also your mindset, your relationships, your physical health, and your emotional health and giving back. Had I not started developing those, that all actually tied together and was the reason I think I was able to become successful monetarily because they all kind of ripple together and, and have an effect on one another. So that's where I landed and it felt amazing when I sold my business this past year for $321 million. And for 10 seconds, I was like, this is everything I ever wanted. And then that ended and I said to myself, okay, now what? And that was just such a reality check for me, which in the back of my mind, I knew really, I should have known, I should say that that was coming. Um, because I, I know that it's not about, you know, there's this false belief that there's the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And when we chase it and we think we're going to get there and then we're just going to sit on the beach with a pina colada, saying money and a thing for the rest of our lives. That's not how it works. The key to life is movement and growth. And if you're not continuing to move and to grow in what I call these five core areas of your life, you aren't going to be happy no matter how much money you have. So take it from me, somebody who's actually gotten that, that money. And I'm not saying it's not great to have money. That is part of the equation. It's one fifth to be exact, the career and finances. Um, but it's what are you doing to make that money? Are you using your passions? Are you using your strengths? Are you enjoying waking out of bed every day saying, I love what I do. I can't wait to do it. Of course, there's going to be days when they suck, but that's part of it. But in general, you know, it's something that you really enjoy and are, you're outsourcing those weaknesses. You're not focusing on those every day or being forced to focus on. Them. And so that's the journey, you know, that I got to. And I realized, you know what? 
life is about this growing in these different core areas. And so that's when I pivoted after I sold my business to saying, I want to help other people that struggled the same way that I did when I was younger, when I, when I hit my rock bottom bounce and they may feel like victims or think that money's the, the, the solution to everything. And I want to help them to, you know, I'm going back in time, 25 years and help them to see the things that I wish I'd known back then. I learned them over the years through blood, sweat, and tears and reading literally thousands, hundreds of, call it hundreds of self-help books, but then you, when you add in the, the seminars and the tapes and, and the podcast, all these other things that, you know, I would go to speaking gigs uh, to see these people perform and, and speak. I combined all that into what my system now is. And at the end of the day, it comes down to habits. And it's what are the habits that you've developed in each of these five core main areas of your life? What are the failure habits that you might have gotten from a system that's broken? And how do we replace those with what I call success habits? And so that's my mission. That's what I'm trying to help people with and to show them that, yes, the career and finances are important. And, I can, and it's about entrepreneur is, is, a, is a cool word and I love it. And it's about becoming an entrepreneur if that's what you want to do. But the real entrepreneur, the real mission, the real goal in your life is to become an entrepreneur of the most important business that you're ever going to run which is your life. And you know, what more important aspect than these five more core, these five core areas to focus on? These, you know, your mindset, your career and finances, your relationships, your physical health, your emotional health and giving back. And I treat these like I would a business and I learned how to run a successful business. And in doing that, you know, you've got your human resources, your marketing, your accounting, these things. Well, just like you learn how to manage those and focus on those and grow and make sure that they're going forward to run a successful, you know, traditional business, you need to do the same with your life. But instead of those, it's your five cores. So that's kind of where I've landed. And um, now I want to help people to do the same. And so I'm happy to take any questions or, or, or you know, discuss further any of the five cores that people would like to. Oh, I think you're muted. Yeah. If anyone has any questions, please, please feel free to post them in the chat. Or if you uh, would like to ask them um, in person, like you can turn on your video and um, you can unmute yourself and then ask the question there. Um, as long as no one is asking a question, my question would be, um, you mentioned those um, habit, uh, those uh, success habits how do you change bad habits into successful habits? Like, you know, like from, for me personally, if I want to change something, sometimes it's that laziness or the, like in the beginning, I, I'm motivated to do all those things. And then it slowly just kind of like gets away. How do you successfully get it where you want it to be? Okay. So that is like, the best question you could ask and it's it's the it's the heart and it's the key to why i call it the 95 percenters versus the five percenters why 95 percent of us just sort of never follow through and get to the point where we're able to stop those failure habits and replace them with success habits there's these these habits that we have that aren't doing us any good they dig in deep right they're like a curmudgeonly old grandparent refusing to budge and it's not easy to unlodge them but if you're willing to do the, the, the work and the key is basically discipline and having a system. So you can't just like, it just doesn't work nowadays to just say, okay, I want to lose weight and I'm just going to try different things and be, be, be distracted and let this person tell me and try their thing and let this person tell me and try their thing and just constantly basically being a victim and letting other people pull you in whatever direction they want because they're trying to sell you for $9.99 how to, how to lose 10 pounds. You've got to take it. You've got to basically base. You first, you got to connect with your why. Like, why does it really make sense for me to weight, lose weight? What am I going to actually get from it? You know, I'm going to get, I'm going to look better. I'm going to feel better. I'm going to have sustained energy and longevity to propel me through life. Like when you really connect with that, then you say, okay, now how do I do it? And that's what I help people with. So instead of just being like one of these guys that says, Hey, go out and do it because you should, um, I do actually have a system in place and it's going to be come to fruition through this app 
that I'm developing, which I'm super excited about. And it's going to be gamified and you're going to be a rock. You're going to basically have this rocket ship and each engine of your rocket is one of your cores. And so you have these five cores and the idea is you want to be firing on all cylinders, right? So you want to be building your, stopping your failure habits each day and building your success habits each day in, in these five cores. And you don't do it all at once. You got to start small. So going back to what you're asking, if you try to go too big, too fast, you will fail because it's just too intimidating. And that's what most people try to do. They're like, you know, it's like the, at New Year's when you go to the gym and there's a million people in there, you're like, and they're all like, oh yeah, I'm going to get in shape these next two days. And where do they, where are they two weeks later? You know, um, it's because they try to do too much and then they come home and they're too, they're sore and they're like, oh, that sucked. Like, I can't do that. That's, but if you just start with like five minutes a day, it doesn't seem like a big deal and it's not hard. And it's like you're tricking your brain into actually succeeding. So you want to use these little mind hacks and there's certain things called habit stacking. There's a book called uh, Atomic Habits by James Clear. He has some really cool little ways to trick your brain. At the end of the day, it's basically you want to reduce the friction on things by making them appealing and attractive and easier on things that you want to do, habits you want to develop, and you want to increase the friction, make them less attractive, make them harder for the things that you don't want to do, right? So things like, um, let's say you, you, you're a midnight snacker, like I was, and I still am, but my midnight snacks consisted of Doritos and M&Ms, and you know, that's what I was craving at midnight, right? And that, that that's, over time, when I was younger, I could get away with it. But as I started to get a little older, I saw it starting to take its toll. Again, the law of compounding. But if you literally just don't buy, you remove those from the equation, right? You don't even have those as an option in your shelves. You get rid of them and you don't buy them at the store. And then you replace them with something that's not, it's not going to taste as good at first. For me, it's trail mix. Um, and at first I was like, this isn't quite the same. But when you start doing it every day, I'm telling you, these, it becomes, not only does it taste as good, it tastes better. Because now you're like, okay, not only is this satisfying my hunger, but I feel really good because I know it's not, it's not hurting my health. It's helping my health, right? And so it becomes this sort of like, and then it becomes a habit. And before you know it, your habit is working for you instead of against you. Now you've got the habit of eating the trail mix at midnight instead of the M&Ms and the Doritos. There's a question. There's actually two. Um, the first one's from author. He's asking where to start, improve one area at a time or work on all of them at the same time. So, sorry, I lo you cut out right, right in the beginning. That's repeat that question. Okay, I'll repeat it. Uh, where to start, improve one area at a time or work on all of them at the same time? Uh, so that, that's, that's a great question. That goes back to what I was just talking about. And that's what the app will help you with. So you have these five cores um, and I, you don't have to use the app. You can help people with it as well um, without the app, but the app is going to be kind of like a gamified fun way to do it. But no, you absolutely should not try to start on all five of your cores at once. You want to pick one. And I have this little test. If you go to my website, uh, moremomentum.com, M-O-O-R-E, momentum.com. There's a, a brief little quiz you can take and it'll sort of give you the 10,000th of view of where you stand in each of these main areas of your life. And then the one that you're weakest on, that's where you should start. And that's what you, and you don't want to like write out 20 habits you want to stop and 20 habits you want to start. You want to just pick the top two or three right? And you say, okay, these, I know that I'm doing these. It's very obvious. They're hurting me. They're causing me negative momentum. And here are the ones I want to start. I want to replace them with. And you just essentially start with even just one or two a day and you got to keep doing them. That's the key. Because if you start and then you stop, the habit has, hasn't had a chance to develop. Habits don't care if they're good or bad, helping or hurting us. Either way, they're going to do their thing. And they're going to compound over time. Just like I was saying with my equation of life, uh, your belief system plus your repeated actions plus time equals who you will become. So if your belief system's broken and you're taking an action that's hurting you and, you, and you're not aware of it, then it's going to, over time, it's going to just going to hurt you more and more. So yeah, you want to start small. You want to make sure that you are actually 
you know, just taking one or two at a time and you're going to keep doing it. There's no magic answer for how long it'll take you to form the habit and to get rid of the bad one. It's different. I've heard people say, oh, it's 30 days. It's, it's six weeks. It's three weeks. To me, that's BS. The, the reality is every person is different. Every habit is different. And certain habits are going to form quicker. There's certain habits, like for me, flossing. I went to the dentist three years ago and he's like, you need to floss more regularly. And I just, it wasn't on my radar because it wasn't, I had never had a cavity and never problems with my teeth. And I said, okay. And so I literally just got in the habit every, every morning and every night, right before I brush my teeth, I do it. And then I do it. I have it stack it with, um, at night, right before I'm brushing my teeth. And so it's, I'm already brushing my teeth. And then at first, you know, I missed a few days and I forgot, but literally probably within a week, two weeks tops, it was to the point where it was on automatic. I wasn't even thinking about it and I was flossing and brushing. It doesn't even seem like a chore. At first I was like, oh, this is annoying, right? But now it's, my brain is conserving energy. It's already locked in. It's a, it's a positive habit that's replaced my failure habit of not doing it. And I don't even have to think about it and it's helping me. So that's the idea. That's how you want to do these things. You want to take them one day at a time, one step at a time. And some will take longer than others, but as long as you keep doing them, and then one day you're going to wake up and it's a really cool feeling. You're like, now I'm doing something and I'm automatically building my positive momentum every day. Yeah, you kind of already answer part of uh, Tom's question. He says, I'm just reading the book of Dale Carnegie. You recommend it. It's been a great tip. What are some simple beneficial habits to start with? For example, referring to that kind of advices the book gives. So I assume he's talking about how to win friends and influence people. Um, that's that. Yeah, that was the very first self-help book that I was able to discover in college. That really just sort of shifted my whole reality. I told you I had that rock bottom bounce. And that book focuses on really to sum that entire book up in one sentence. It's get away, let, take your ego out of the equation, make other people feel special and you'll never have any problems. And it's like, that's so freaking true. I just, I can't express enough how everybody just wants to feel special. It's, it's in our biological core. Uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's primal. And if we're not feeling special, if people don't acknowledge us, if people ignore us, and especially nowadays, right. With these, texting and you're walking through the street, you're not looking people in the eye like, like people used to, you're not smiling at people, you're going to really have problems in life because it may not seem like a big deal to you. Oh, I'm just avoiding eye contact or, oh, I'm not asking them about their family. But it, again, that's a habit that you develop. Like when I talk to people and I haven't seen them or even just colleagues, people I work with on my team, I always ask like, how was your weekend? You know, how's your family? How, how are things? How are the kids? And it's making people just feel special. And then in the work world, it, it works the exact same way. When you're working with somebody and you want to do business with them, you know, you're, you could have the best presentation in the world, but if you don't make them feel special and give them the little tinglys, you're going to have a problem. So, sorry, I probably digressed a little. What was this, the last part of his question? What was the second part of his question? Um, the second part, um, Make sure I did. I did. it's in the chat. If you want to read, like whenever you want to read, oh, it's it in there. Okay. Again. Right. but, um, what are okay. some simple beneficial habits to start with? Okay. So, right. So, I mean, because of that book, we we're just talking about it. Yeah. I guess I did kind of answer that question. You know, just start making sure that everybody you interact with, you are taking the focus off of yourself and you're putting it on them and you're making them feel special. And you just watch how your relationships are, are built and strengthened, how you all of a sudden start gaining all these allies that are like on your team and want to help you grow and succeed. If you treat people as if you want, if that they're special and you care about them and you want them to grow and succeed, it's a reciprocation and I promise you it'll come back. I mean, yes, are there really selfish people out there that no matter how much you give them, they just take, take, take? Yes, there are. And those are the people you want to stay away from. Um, those are the relationships. And, and you, I do believe that you are who you hang out with and spend the most time with. So 
I have this little exercise that I do with my system where you literally write down your top three people that you spend the most time with and you rate them in each of their five cores on a scale of one to five. And you say, where do they stand in their mindset? Where do they stand in their career and finances, physical health, uh, emotional health and giving back and their relationships? And if they have really low scores in all, then that's rubbing off on you, I guarantee, in some way. And so I'm not saying just drop your friend, but you know, if you're trying to grow, you want to grow with people that are, are on the same page. And you know, I think it was Warren Buffett, and a lot of people have said it, but I specifically remember Warren Buffett saying, I always did my best to try to surround myself with people that were smarter and you know, quote unquote better than me. Nobody's better, but that basically what he meant was feel like people that he knew would help him to grow and to get to that level that he wanted to be and that versus, you know, when you're with people on a lower rung that are holding you back. I mean, just think about it in terms of you're climbing up a ladder, somebody's helping you up versus somebody dragging you down and pulling you down. Yeah. What you said, I, I found, find really true. Like it reminded me of um, this thing that Sharon Gannon, the co-founder of Jiva Mukti Yoga said, um, she says, to uplift your own life, you have to uplift the lives of others. And I think it's it's the same idea, just... It's exactly right. Words. right. You just make people feel special and you help them to achieve their goals and be happy and do their thing and it will come back to you. It's a very simple concept, but it is a universal principle that has been around since the beginning of time or since the beginning of humans and it'll be around till the end. There is another question. You talked about rich dad, poor dad. I've been reading the self-help books like Seven Habits to High Effective People or the Success Principles, etc. cetera. Um, I realized that while reading the books, you built a lot of self-confidence and motivation. But later on, there's a lack in the di um, directionality when you go to the practical world. How do you think we can overcome that? Another really great question. And that's exactly what I was talking about earlier when I said, you know, I'm just, I got tired of reading a self-help book and then feeling that like amazing, like I can take on the world. Like, yes, this is the secret to the universe. And then two days later, it's like gone and I've forgotten about it and I'm back to my, my old routine. And that's where I put, that's where I finally put it all together. And I realized it's about habits. It's about having a system to build the habits and then building those correct habits until they have formed. And then they're automatically helping you because if you just read something once and you're like, yes, I should do that. Or I should do this. And then maybe you try it a few times, but then you don't, you're not consistent and you don't follow through. It's going to fizzle out. Right? And you're not going to get the benefits of all that awesomeness that you were feeling. And all of a sudden you're like, wait, yeah. That, and then you're reading another one, right? And you're like, oh, and so I did that. I went and I started, but what I, the difference in what I did is I actually started developing my own system on the side and using, like I said earlier, myself as a human science experiment. And I was just, I've always been this crazy note taker. And so I want people to benefit from what I've gone through. And again, th these things I've learned, they're universal principles. They're not just specific to me. Although everybody, when you learn them, I have a system to show you that basically, you know, you're going to want to tweak them to you individually. But the, the whole point is that you're going to start to figure out what it is that the principle center you would do, like what makes sense and what you know is going to build positive momentum in each of these cores. And then you have a system in place to make sure that you're following through every single day, no matter what, until it becomes part of your life. And all of a sudden you're doing those things and you're reaping the benefits and discipline is key. And that ties into the mindset. You got to be disciplined and you got to not just be pulled by everybody passing Joe that comes along and says, here, no, try this, try this, try this. You need to say, okay, this is what I know is good for me. I'm going to do it. And I'm not going to stop until I do. And again, my app, Will help people with that and i also have a system that people are interested um that's basically the system i've been using before the app that's a little less automated but it's an excel spreadsheet and you open it up every day and if people want to go to my website or email me i'm happy to, to talk to them about it but it's essentially just you have your five core areas and you have the things written down the habits that you're trying to stop the ones you're trying to start and you literally just review it 
briefly every day. You say, okay, how did I do yesterday? And again, you just want to focus on one at a time so that you don't get overwhelmed. And that you're kind of holding yourself accountable. Accountability is a huge part of this. And so this question from, from Danielle, um, yeah, it's like the reason people fail and, and, and don't follow through and get excited is because they don't hold themselves accountable and there's nobody else to. And it's, I don't blame people. It's really hard to do. And so that's why this whole system that I came up with, it stems from basically a way to hold yourself accountable. And so the app will do that. It'll send you a reminder in the morning to check in and remind yourself what you're trying to accomplish that day. And then at night, it's a simple check, um, check out and it says, okay, how'd you do? And you just give yourself a score. And as you're doing it, you're leveling up and you're going to new planets and galaxies and you're meeting new aliens and your ship is being um, becoming fortified and leveled up and you're getting space credits and all these things. But, and as you're leveling up in the game, you're also leveling up in real life. So I'm trying to tie this whole, you're becoming addicted to getting super awesome and we're using this technology that has been making us, uh, you know, is being used to addict us. And, and that same, what they've figured out, like the social media and these things, right? People are on it all day, but we're using it in a good way. And so you're like, oh, I can't wait to see what the next level is, what that next alien is going to be, what that next planet I'm going to get to. But you can't do it unless you're actually following through and doing the things you're supposed to. Okay, some positive feedback here. Are there any more questions or shall we continue with our little interactive thing? I guess no questions for now. So we've prepared a little, um, wait, I'll get the link real quick. A little something which I'm going to post in the chat and everyone can just open this. So um, we're going to place you in, in a few breakout rooms and there will be five, one for each core. And Will, you've mentioned the cores before. Um, do you want to sum up the cores and just like a couple of sentences again for everyone to uh, kind of remember what, what all the cores are about? Absolutely. Right. So your first core that we talked about is your mindset and all the, all the, all the cores kind of revolve around that without a strong mindset, you really, you, you're not going to make it. And it's because your mindset, it's your overall perception on life. It's your attitude. It's your confidence level. Is the glass half full? Is it half full, uh, half empty? Is it what are you, what I call a growth owner? who knows that you have everything within you to kick ass, take names. There's nothing you can stop you and obstacles are temporary roadblocks waiting for solutions. Or are you what I call a fixed victim, which many of us are where, Oh, poor me. My brain's broken. I was born the way I am. There's not really much I can do about it. And I'm just going to try to tread through life and hopefully, you know, not hit rock bottom. And they're just kind of hovering above rock bottom. What an awful way to go through life. So the idea, you got to switch your mindset to that growth owner. To where you truly believe that there's nothing that can get in your way and that can stop you and that again people everybody you meet is an, a potential ally a potential great relationship every business opportunity you come across you're looking at it with eyes wide open and saying okay how can i how can i benefit from that how can i you know make that use that to my advantage you're persistent because you know you have everything within you to to get there versus just being fearful and letting fear rule your life. And when you get a no or a rejection or a failure happens, you're letting that completely shut you down. You're using failures as you're failing beautifully. You're, you're, you're understanding that every time you fail, it's an opportunity to grow and to learn. So you're not fearing them. You're welcoming them. Okay. So that's your mindset, your career and your finances. We talked about this, you know, so I originally thought it was just all about the money portion. Um, there is a money portion involved. You want to make sure that the money that you do make from your career is your comp, you're using the law of compounding. You're having it work for, for you, whether you're working for it or not by building passive income. Um, but the career side, you know, what, what it is you're doing to make that money, you need to make sure that it's tied to something, to your strengths, the things that you 
people have told you you're good at, things you know you're good at, you've grown out, you've always just easily excelled over other people. But then you, com- you got to combine that with your passions as well. So something, the things that really get you, rev your engines and, and make you excited inside. And you say, okay, this, every time I do this, I get the tinglys and, and I, 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 I can work for 10 hours and not even feel like I was working for one hour. Though that's what you want your career to be about. You want to be able to burst out of bed and say, again, I love what I do. I can't wait to get started. Yes, there will be those days when, you know, you don't want to get out of bed and there's tough days and stuff. But again, it's, if you have that right mindset, you're just pushing through them knowing that at the end of the tunnel, there's a rainbow. And when you get to it, you're going to feel that reward. And then you're going to keep pushing and get to the next one and the next one and the next one. Okay. So then your relationships, um, I break that down into three main areas, your colleagues and acquaintances, um, everybody on this call, uh, I would consider in this category, it's, it's just new people that you're meeting or that you're passing by or that are coming into your life briefly. And you're, but you're looking at them as opportunities, you know, like, is this a relationship I can build? Um, is this, is this something that this person can become an ally and we could actually build some momentum together and we could help each other versus just, Oh, you know, there's another person or, you know, walking by when you're walking down the street or, or your colleagues and you intentionally avoid eye contact or you're looking at your phone. Um, you're not smiling at them. You're not making them feel special, asking them about themselves. That's, those are all wasted opportunities. Then with your friends and your family, it is, you know, these are the people that you're close to and that you really care about. And it's making sure that you're cultivating those relationships so that you are not getting caught up in all the crazy to do's and being pulled in a million directions in life, but making sure that the people that are important to you, that you're spending real time with, you're not just liking their photo on Facebook or social media. Um, You know, so right now we're all quarantined. Are you having Zoom meetings with your family? I just had one a dinner with, with my family the other night there in DC had one the other night with my wife's family. Um, we we're, were having virtual wine meetings uh, or excuse me, wine hangouts with some of our friends and playing games and stuff. So that stuff's super important. And then the last one is your significant other in your relationships. Are you doing this because your ego is it's your ego versus their ego and I'm right and you're wrong. No, we all grew up differently and we all have different brains and, and way we look at life. So there's always going to be these moments. And in the beginning, it's all puppy dogs and ice cream and you don't see that. And then all of a sudden, you know, that wears off and it's a reality. It, relationships take work. And if you want to do this instead of this, you need to come to terms with some agreements with them and say, okay, this is how your mind works. This is how my mind, mind works. Let's find a, a happy medium. Let's agree to make sure that we're on the same page with things and just continue to support and build that relationship together versus do this because that's why divorce and breakups happen. Then your next one is your physical health, next core, which is pretty self-explanatory. You know, your physical health um, is basically, you know, it, it, it's, it's your eating, it's your sleeping, it, it's your, your actual exercising. Uh, you know, what are you doing in your life? And again, this is where I said, these are universal principles. You need to move. You need to get your body moving. You need to put good foods in them, but everybody doesn't have to eat the same thing. We don't all have to have broccoli. We don't all have to get on a treadmill. What is it that you enjoy moving with? Like for me, it's, I like in terms of my movement and exercise, it's basketball, which I can't play right now. So I've, I've pivoted because of, you know, my gyms are, are closed down and stuff. And now I'm, I'm wrestling with my kids at the end of each day. And we have these, these epic wrestling matches. One of them's 11 months. The other one's four years old. They jump on my back. I'm doing push-ups we're wrestling, my heart rate gets up. And, you know, that, that's something that I've come to truly enjoy and found that I can do that every day. And at least I'm getting some, some sort of exercise. My wife's taking them on walks every single day while I'm doing this type of stuff. Um, and then eating wise, I mentioned earlier about the, the snacking and, and how for me it was trail mix to replace the Doritos and the M&Ms. I guarantee you there's something that you like that tastes really good to you. That's not bad for you. And that, you know, is good. And you just keep trying, keep looking for this, keep finding them. And again, if they may not taste quite as good, and again, it's a, it's a brain hack to where you're like, okay, Doritos and the M&Ms are, they taste so good and I want them, and this doesn't taste quite as good. But then once you kind of get past that hump and you're eating them every day, you're like, wow, this actually tastes better because it's improving my health. Um, and then, you know, things like sleeping, sleeping is so important, getting 
seven to eight hours minimum a night, I think is, is important. Um, and then other little things, which I, I've got a book that's coming out that I'll talk about all these things as well, but essentially all the things related to your physical health. And your last one, your last core is your emotional health and you're giving back. So this is managing your, your stress, uh, expressing your passions regularly, making sure the world is better, not worse for having you in it. So, you know, what are you, you know, do you love to play golf? Do you love, do you love to go on, on, on walks in the forest? You know, are you doing these things or is life taking over and you're not having the opportunity or you're not scheduling these things into your life? You got to schedule them in because before you know it, a month, six months, a year has gone by and you haven't done these things that make you feel alive inside, play music, whatever it is. Um, and you got to stop to smell the roses. If you're just constantly being caught up in the dwelling of the everyday life and you're just got your head down like a chicken with his head cut off or in the sand and, and you're just work, work, working, doing to do's constantly and you're not lifting up your head to see what life has to offer. It's an awful way to go through life. You've got to enjoy the small things. And then the last part is that giving back part. Like this is so huge. And the more, the older I get, the more I realize how true it is. It's in our primal instinct to be selfish creatures. You know, back in our caveman days, we, you know, if there's a, a, a saber tooth tiger coming, you know, you want to push that other guy out in front of you so you don't get eaten. Um, that doesn't serve us anymore. And the more selfish and greedy and, 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 and whatnot you are in life now, the, the more you, the something inside of you is like, ah, I sh probably shouldn't be doing that. You, not only do you have a conscious, but then you're looked at in, in a negative light by other people as well. And it just builds that negative momentum and is hurting you every step of the way versus saying to yourself, okay, I came into this world. How do I leave it a better place than when I came into it? You know, is, is the world going to be better or worse for having me in it? And how can I contribute? How can I help other people grow? And again, we talked about this earlier where every time if, when you do help others, not only is it cool to see their, 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 their reaction and how it makes them feel and you get that surge of energy and awesomeness when like you can actually help somebody become a better person or, or whatever it is that you're helping them with or, or a group of people or the world. But then you're also getting that selfish feeling of, wow, this freaking feels amazing. Like I just did something for somebody else and s seeing how they're, you know, feeling inside is actually making me feel just as good. Then you got the third benefit of basically knowing that usually when you help people succeed, they're going to want to do the same back to you and you're going to have more allies, stronger relationships so that they'll want to help you build your own momentum as well. And those are the five cores. Thank you so much. Um, so I had prepared five rooms, as you can see, I posted that, but we're going to do a different way because um, time, time wise, this will work out probably better, but I'm going to just ignore what it says underneath, just so you see which core is means what, but you can just click on that link and then everyone, um, I'll put you into two groups, which you can use to discuss and brainstorm what any ideas you have on those five cores. And then you can just type them up in the um, file that you will get to when you um, click the link. And I'm going to assign you to your rooms real quick. And well, you're invited to because I can't take you out. You can ignore just doing that or you can visit both rooms, whatever you want. Um, but I'm gonna invite everyone else real quick. And you have about five, six minutes. Um, you'll get a little notification before the rooms close down. Okay. Okay, I've invited everyone. So it says the host is inviting you to join the breakout rooms. Do yes. I should go in there or not? You don't have to because, you know, you've already done your part. You can, if you want to join the, um, the breakout rooms, I can put you in, you can join the one or I can put you in the other a little later, whatever you prefer. But people will have a few minutes now to uh, discuss their ideas on the topic. Okay. And then they can write them down. If you click on the link, 
you can also follow um, exactly what people are writing down. Like it's, uh, you can actually see how many people are um, in there right now. And um, you can see what's being typed. Okay. So. Well, so well, yeah, I guess while people are doing that. Um, so yeah, speaking of relationships, I don't know much about you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about you? <laughs> I've, met, I've obviously met Robert and Linus. Robert is um, actually not really here. He's just online because he started right. this meeting. But there's also still some people who haven't joined. Um, wait, let me see real quick. What's um? I don't know if they're not at their laptops or if they're ignoring the invitations. Um, okay, let me see. Well, okay, I'll tell you and whomever else is listening. <laughs> um, well, I'm from Bochum. I live here and uh, I joined the TEDx team last year after I've uh, been to some of the events, one in Pittsburgh and the last, last one here in Bochum last year. And I uh, really liked it. So I... I was excited to become a part of it. Nice. And so what, what is your official role with the company? Um, I'm um, mostly working on um, picking speakers and uh, communicating with speakers. Nice. And organizing every, everything around speakers pretty much. That's fun. You get to talk to some very cool, interesting people. I know. Yes. It's really, it's been really fun. Especially yeah. now that with all the circumstances, like organizing two events at the same time. Is, uh... I bet. Yeah. So, right. And speaking of that, yeah, um, I know Robert and, and Linus know I definitely want to, I want to come to Germany and I want to speak at the next event. So I want to make sure we, we, um, we all get on the same page with that. I think that would yeah. be super exciting. That'd be great. Goes, yeah. Up to Germany. Yes. Let's do it. <laughs> so that would be neat. Um, so, but tell me more about you. So personal life wise. Married? Kids? Yes? No? Just a cat. Cat. Oh, cat. that yeah. is a full-time job. Can that be. Is, it's not a full-time job, but it's, it's good to have him here now. <laughs> um, what do I do? I, um, I teach English. I teach yoga. And uh, I used to be a photographer. I used to tour with bands and tour manage and do all different sorts of jobs on the road. Um, Very cool. So you, things. Yeah, so you follow, it sounds like you've been following your passions and things that you enjoy and you're going towards them versus just going and getting a, a desk yeah. job somewhere. That's very true. Actually, this one, like, I think it all started off with this, like, I read a few help, self-help book, help books and it was actually another book that wasn't really so much a, I don't even remember what the title was. I didn't even read the whole book. It was really bad, but there was one quote in it that I got from it. And I think that was the reason why I had to read it, which was stop wishing, start doing. Oh. And when I read that, I just kind of like start, like I wrote it down on a post-it and I posted that post-it in my room on my mirror where I had to see it every day. And it kind of became the motto that I tried to that follow. Is, and yeah, it that's everything. So uh, that's huge. Right. I mean, it's like everything I'm talking about, right. It's like, you just gotta just take the action, right. If you sit about, if you think about it, like you, one of the persons asked the question, like you read these books, you become excited, but then nothing happens. It's like, well, you just gotta stop wishing for it to happen. You gotta start doing it. You gotta start taking the action until it becomes habit. So yeah. that's, that's really great. Right. I love hearing how people's lives get shifted by little certain things that they come across. Um, but action, action, action. Yeah. That's a big theme. You know, it, if you just plan, if you over plan or if you let fear kind of stop you from taking action, you say, Oh, well I'll do it when I get around to it. Or, you know, or you're like tr planning something and you're like, okay, this is what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it. And you're over analyzing and doing it without actually taking the action. Just take the action and fail, learn, pivot, take the action again. And as you're doing that, you, you're getting so much more out of the experience because you're figuring out what you like, what you don't, what works, what doesn't. And yeah. And I, I think there's two different ways too. There's all those opportunities that pre present themselves to you 
that you either choose to take or not, you know, you can ignore them because you're afraid to just grab them or you take them risking to fail. But there's also the ones that will not present themselves to you. They'll just, they'll be there, but you actually have to take the first step. And I think these are even harder for some people to take because they're not, you know, they feel so much out of reach. That's, yeah, I mean, God, that's, it's, it gets back to, right, the 95% versus the 5%. You know, most people are just, again, in that broken system we were talking about. Unfortunately, we're, our brains are kind of programmed in a certain way, I feel like, to, to look at things a certain way and to just kind of fall into this sort of role that is not really helping us in the, in the way we're looking at things and, in the world. And if you can kind of step back, and again, it's like base it off principles that have been around since the beginning of time and will be around till the end and, and say, these are the things I need to take action on because I know that they'll make me happy. And then just, just do it and take those actions. It's like, it's everything. And it doesn't happen overnight. And that's what we're in this instant generation, like I said earlier, where it's like people just want to click a button and get it, you know, and you can most things. Like I ran a business and I sold for $321 million where you click the button and you got the, your food delivered to your door, <laughs> doorstep delivery. Um, and so I get that. And, you know, and it, with technology, it's like Stan Lee once said, with great power comes great responsibility. And so just because we can do a lot of these things doesn't mean that we should just be sitting around on our phones all day, right? You need mm -hmm. to say, now, now we're at a stage where you got to step back and say, okay, well, how should I be using my phone and technology? And am I still, am I using it to help me or is it hurting me? And am I paying attention to these five core areas in my life and making sure I'm building my mindset, my relationships, my physical health, my emotional health, my career, my finances, or am I just kind of treading through and waiting for the day to be over? One thing I like, an exercise I like to do with people that I think is a really great way to sort of flash forward and help you really shine a spotlight on the things that you need to change is to make a funeral list of what you want said in each of your course what, how you want to be eulogized. And it may sound a little bit morbid, but I can't think of a better way. And it's, it's, I read it in a book years ago. I wish I could remember who it was. Um, and it really helped me to sort of say, okay, if I die, what do I want people to say about me? And then it's sort of like, is my life on track with that right now? Am I headed in that direction? And it's a, a lot, of, it's going to be a harsh reality for a lot of people because the answer is going to be like, oh, wait, I'm not doing this, this, or this, but it, it will help you to see the habits that you do need to develop in order to um, get to that point where there are people at your funeral versus just your mom mm -hmm. who came for the snacks. And, uh, you know, you are actually able to, 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 to have people say the things that you want about you because you were able to reach your goals. Yeah, I was sorry. I was just uh, looking into because people only met, um, taking notes on uh, core one and two. So I just sent them a, a little reminder to not forget core three to five. I got a couple more minutes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so true. I feel like most people just never really, they, people tend to uh, moan a lot about what's wrong or what what they're missing and what they think is wrong in their lives, but they never really try to see what they have to change. They just want things to change without right. doing anything, like just waiting it out. And right. For me in life, I definitely have changed a lot of things, like by doing things that others probably wouldn't have done. But a lot of times I just took chances that, I heard about or I that that didn't even present themselves like right in my like like in reach but that I just knew were there and I think a lot of people just forget about those those ideas because they're so far away instead of just you know just trying to take them anyway right 100% it goes to that whole victim fixed victim versus growth owner mindset you know it's like, what is, what's the mindset that is guiding your life? You know, is it that you're a victim and well, it's like, yeah, you know, there's these things out there, but oh, I can't really do that or I'm not going to, 
that seems too hard or whatever. Um, and that's the game changer. And, and it's not easy to develop one mindset over the other if, if, you're, if you're a fixed victim, which I feel like most people, again, it's, it's not, you know, like black and white either. There's, there's gray areas in between, but a lot of people have at least some of that fixed victim in them where, you know, they're just intimidated or they let their fear, they're fear driven. Um, fear is like such a crazy thing that just stops people from reaching their potential. And when you can change your view on fear as something you should welcome because it, it means it's an opportunity for growth versus something to be avoided at all costs, that's such a huge game changer. Yeah, very true. Because then it's like, okay, now I'm going to tackle it head on. And if I fail, great. That means I learned something and I know that I'm growing. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've noticed that a lot of times when I feel fear and it's, it's not only the feeling of fear, but other people seeing that you're afraid is what makes it even worse. So covering that fear and pretending you're not afraid and just doing the things anyway, will get you to the point where you're actually not afraid of it because you realize it doesn't hurt you. You know, it doesn't harm you. That's exactly right. It's it's fake it till you make it is something I tell people all the time. And it, it, there, there is a lot of truth to that. You know, it's again, it goes to what you're just saying. Just take the action. Like if you're afraid to get on a plane or if you're afraid to publicly speak, you know, sign up for Toastmasters, just start doing it. And then that's the only way you're going to get better. Right. And you're going to see, it's not so scary. That fear has this, like, you think it's this big, scary thing that's going to just absolutely like, you know, when you actually, th but when, when you think about it and when it actually happens, you're like, wait, that wasn't so bad. He's not such a scary boogeyman. He's just like, just whatever, you know? And, and, and okay. So that wasn't so bad. And then you do it again. And it's even more so and more so. And that's how you're building your momentum and you're, before you know it, that fear just doesn't exist anymore because your confidence is being built. And you're like, I'm actually good at this and I'm, I'm succeeding in it. Like, and you're like, why did I ever fear that before? That was such a waste of time. Yeah. It's very true. Okay, I'm going to close the breakout rooms. They'll be closing in one minute. So people are going to start coming back. Like, I've definitely experienced the same thing. That level of fear just like slowly becomes less and less because it's, me. Yeah, it's, it's a learning process. Yeah, I mean, speaking was something I was really scared of. Um, same here. Yeah, and, and then I just started, I like forced myself to start doing it. And now I do these, you know, and I do on my Instagram, our Instagram page, it's called five core life with a five. Uh, we have over 400,000 followers on there now. And we do these IG lives. Like I interview people. Um, so by the way, you, anybody else that's interested in being on it, um, just let, reach out to me let me know. I love to do little interviews. It doesn't matter who the person is and just kind of talk about life and, you know, and, and just doing these types of things. And then I, I spoke for my alma mater, my college invited me back to speak and I was terrified but then once I got through it, I was like, not only was that not bad, but I think I did pretty darn good for speaking for the first time in a while to a huge public group. And now I just can't wait to do it again. You know, I was like, that felt amazing. Like I'm craving it and I want more of that. And I think of like, wow, I would have missed out on that amazing feeling had I just let my fear yeah. take me and freeze me. So true. Okay, I think everyone is back from the breakout rooms. And um, we have a, a lot of notes here. Okay, so this it's it's been now almost an hour since we started a little late. We have a couple more minutes. So maybe we can just read through this real quick. Um, and then Will, if you wanna comment on anything. So on the first core people wrote down optimism, seeing an obstacle as a chance to grow instead of having a victim mentality. Discipline, stay present, uh, president, and resilient. Persistent. Yes. Persi oh, persistent. Sorry. Yes. Mindset <laughs> is what you think, how to build habits. Awareness, being aware of your thoughts, meditation. Any, uh, anything to say about this? Anything? Oh, those are all, those are all great. You guys are listening and you're, and you're starting and you're getting it. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, that first, that optimism, seeing an obstacle and knowing it's just a temporary roadblock versus, Oh man, I can't do anything about that. I'm just going to go the other way and the easy, I'm going to take the easy way out. 
you know, discipline, that's the number one thing for your mindset, like to develop a strong mindset, I should say, is you got to have discipline. And again, it's not easy. That's why I have a system that I've developed to help you with that discipline, to make it easier, to reduce the friction, to make sure that you're actually doing the things you say you're going to do. But when you make a commitment to yourself and you say, this is what I know is going to make me better, faster, stronger, happier, awesomer, you got to follow through. Otherwise, the habit hasn't developed and it doesn't become part of your life. So that discipline is huge. And then mindset and awareness, same thing. The awareness is that whole 10,000th of view. You got to know what you need to change. Without that, you're just running around like a chicken with your head cut off. Okay. Second core. Wait, am I muted? No, I'm not right now. Good. Um, you can perform best at your job if you see a deeper reason to do it. Task, choosing between different passions to find the one that suits best for, for a job and making our passion our work. Then it doesn't feel like a job and then you enjoy doing what you love. It's time well spent. Anything? Yeah, so love that. So, right, performing, um, finding the reason to, to do what you do, that's connecting to your why, Simon Sinek. I'm sure a lot of people have heard about it. He has this really great YouTube video I recommend people watch. Um, I can't remember the exact name, but basically just type in Simon Sinek, um, finding your why, W-Y-H. Uh, he really does a cool job, but it's, it's you got to connect with things. People got to connect with things on a deeper level to tap into that, that energy and that core in you that will allow you to push through and get things done and feel like it's not even work. If you're not doing that, you're just, you're just spinning your wheels and you're not doing anybody any favors and you're just kind of going through the motions. And, you know, it ties into the next thing, choosing between um, different passions to find one that best suits you. Um, or sorry, making our passion our work so it doesn't feel like a job. Um, enjoy doing what you love. It's time well spent. So I know that people hear that and some people roll their eyes and they're like, yeah, but I still got to make a living. Like if I don't absolutely love what I do, what am I supposed to do? My answer to that is, okay, well, how much time do you have resting? How much time is left in your life and how many years? And do you want to just spend the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years kind of just treading water and just kind of getting through it so that you can work to pay your bills so that you can then work? And it's this vicious cycle of, of not being fulfilled. Go the extra mile, figure out a side hustle, figure out what it is that you are, that you do love, that you're strong about, that you're passionate about, and maybe start building that on the side or just figure out a way to get that into, you know, be looking for other jobs that do it while you're doing your job, that do allow you to do that. And then, you know, don't think about it too much. If you find a good one, it seems good. And you're like, man, eh, it's maybe not the perfect fit, but it seems better Then do it. And then you'll learn. And then you, maybe you find another better one out for that, or you meet somebody at your new job that you collaborate with and you guys build this new business together. I mean, that's just how, if you look at your life that way um, versus just like, well, I can't do that. I mean, there's, that's too hard. I mean, what, start a new business, figure out what I'm passionate about and love. And then, and then I, that's, that's for other people. That's not for me. Then you're missing out on life because that's not what life's about. All right. The third one, it's proof that strong relationships pre relationships provide immense health benefits when interacting with people forget your ego and give them your full attention to make them feel special help them surround yourself with people that will motivate and help you yeah so that first one um health benefits that's absolutely true you know as as human beings again i was talking about primal earlier it's in our primal nature it goes back thousands of years to caveman days when we did better in groups. When we had people around us, we survived longer because that saber tooth tiger, we weren't out on our own. We could defend ourselves better. And so we have this need to be around people and it has so many benefits. And um, besides feeling good, yes, health, it, it does have health benefits. Like, you know, because when you look good, or when, excuse me, when you're feeling better and you have strong relationships, it motivates you to want to do certain things, to get moving, to get and to increase your dopamine, to increase your, your de decrease your stress levels, all these things. Um, so 100% with you guys on that. Um, next one, interacting with people, forget your, 
with people forget your ego and give them your full attention and make them feel special. hundred percent. Like we talked about earlier, Dale Carnegie, how to win friends and influence people written probably, I want to say in the twenties or thirties originally. And you read that book today and it stands up because this is principles that this does not go away. You can't cheat the system. Take the ego off of yourself, make other people feel special and important. And you will have a zillion friends and have as many allies, more allies than you can count. Uh, last one, um, surrounding yourself with people that will motivate and help you. Yep, same thing. And, and again, remember, if you want to surround yourself and have that, you've got to do it yourself. You've got to proactively go out of your way to help other people. And then that will come back your way as well. Fourth core, sleep, healthy food, exercise, enough water, and fresh air. Yep, those are all absolutely correct. Um, right, one thing I didn't talk about earlier when I was talking about physical health, yeah, I mean, fresh air, that, that ties a little bit more into emotional health, but being outdoors, and um, but I guess it's both, because you're, you're moving and you're walking, so if you're exercising, right, try to, if you can get your exercise into doing outside, that actually has an even more benefit, because your mind and your body are connected. So, you know, feeling that, yeah, fresh air, nature, just being surrounded by it and getting outdoors. And science has proven and millions of studies, tons, tons of studies that have been done about how, you know, if you are connecting with nature and you're getting outdoors versus just being stuck in a little cubicle or, or a hole all day and, and not experiencing that, um, you're going to get much better, more benefit, and you're going to be a lot happier. And the last core, fifth core, med meditation to fight stress. Surrounding ourselves with people that lift us up instead of bringing us down. Eliminating stress that causes anxiety and focus on good stress that keeps you motivated and on track. Remember things you are thankful for. Yep. Meditation. We didn't talk about that earlier. That's really, it's, it, it, I do have that in my book and it, it's a great method. You know, some people hear the word meditation, they get turned off. It can be as simple as just breathing. I do breathing exercises every day, which really is meditation. Um, you know, I, but you can take as far or as little as you want. I just breathe literally for, as I'm saying, my mantra every morning, which um, we haven't talked about, but it's, it's a way to, it's part of your mindset. It's a way to boost you, give you a rocket boost at the beginning of the day. I, I've memorized mine and I it's literally just kind of a list of the things that are super important to me that I want to remind myself on a regular day and it incorporates my five cores to make sure that I'm doing to build my momentum every day. And after I say my mantra to myself and I habit stack this by the way, with stretching in the shower because I tore my ACL last year. And so now I have to do these stretches. So I'm stretching and I'm saying my mantra. I'm not even thinking about it. And then after I take like these deep breaths and I just kind of let it all sink in. And I think about how I incorporated all this stuff the day before and how I'm going to bring it into my life that day. And that's absolutely huge. Again, it, it, that versus just running around like a chicken with your head cut off and just doing to do's. It's just not a good quality of life. Um, surrounding ourselves with people that lift us up. Yep, absolutely. Instead of bring us down, of course, you know, that, that, you know, going out and having those positive experiences kind of ties into the um, relationship core as well. Um, making sure that you're having those, you know, if you, if you love having drinks or going out and spending, you know, time with friends, you got to make sure you're doing that. That's stopping to smell the roses. That's enjoying life versus just work, work, work all the time. Um, or coming up with an excuse because you'd rather watch that net Netflix documentary or whatever, you know, it's like, okay, you can do those things, but don't neglect these other parts too. Um, and then I'll just go right. I know we're running out of time uh, get to the last. Remember things you're thankful for. Absolutely. That's, that's a huge one. So at the end of my mantra we were just talking about, I always say what I'm thankful for. Um, so I say that it's the same three things every time. And then I just kind of ad lib and add to things that I'm thankful for. So I always say I'm grateful for, uh, for my family, their health and mine, my persistence and ability to push through and get things done that where others aren't and my creativity and unique lens for seeing the world ability to see things differently than others, which again, back when I was in my victim state, I used to think was a bad thing and my brain was broken because I 
was like, I'm like ADD and I saw things differently than people and I wasn't performing in school like others were. And I was like, there's something wrong with me. Now I wouldn't trade it for the world. And it's allowed me to get to where I am today. And I, I use that instead of pushing it away and trying to say, no, that's not good. I shouldn't have that. Okay. Yeah. Is uh, there any last question? from anyone if not this is actually a perfect ending because we we just summed up the the five cores again and i think through all these like examples and like making this a little more we, we're making it more reachable for people and kind of to to embrace those um ideas into their lives awesome yeah thank you so much for your time and your effort and for sharing your wisdom with us yeah, this has been great. And I, I appreciate you guys all that tuned in and, and spent some time with me. And, uh, you know, like I said, I, I really truly mean it. I just want to help other people to not go down the same road. I started to go down and realize that there's another way to look at life and to build their own momentum. And for selfish reasons, I have two small kids, one's four and one's 11 months, as I mentioned. And I want them to go into a good world where everybody's working together and we're building positive momentum together. And the best way I know to do that is to help people one at a time to build their own positive momentum. So thanks for having me and thanks for being here. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Awesome. Yep. You too. Thanks guys. Bye.